Hey folks, welcome back. Alright, we just ascended out of our hardy lizard cave, I guess that's what I'll call it for now. And we ascended right by this giant mountain peak here. Depending on where you actually ascended, you might even be higher up on this thing. But either way, even if it's raining, it's a pretty manageable climb because there's a lot of points where you can stand up and walk around. Alright folks, so we got a Karak seat up here. And I am not going to use a royal bow this time. And before I get going too far, just so we don't get lost, I'm going to pin that tower for us. And I'm also going to pin that. That's not an actual cave, but it is a little cave inlet there where we can get a Karak seed. Alright folks, I am going to take care of this bad boy nest, not because the loot is great, it's just a Lionel bow. Like, a, a low Lionel bow, not a good one. But, um, I want to show you how to deal with that guy. Hopefully they don't see me. I want to show you to, how to deal with that guy that's wearing the armor. So I'm going to show you the sneak strike here. A real low-tech device. Now you can actually just use a bomb arrow, or even a bomb barrel for that matter. And that'll either chip away at that armor he's wearing, or it'll, you know, blow it up completely. But, um, I find if I just use a rock hammer, it's real low tech. I'm not, you know, using bombs. So, use your discretion, you know, go however which way you want there. But I just find the rock hammer saves all my other stuff. And if you're doing a sneak strike, we should be able to knock that thing off in one go. And there you have it. And it even does a little damage. Can't beat that. Alright, watch out for the bomb barrels. I think I already said that, but... Alright, again, that's just a Lionel bow, so feel free to grab it if you so desire. Actually, I might even grab it just to clear the chest. That's convenient. Alright, I think I got the other parts already. Alright, so from here I'm just going to keep going toward that blue... ...pen. There's also a bunch of other loose pickups here. Might as well scoop them up while we got them. Wait, we're not going to be needing shock fruits for a while. Ah, oh, howdy doody. Alright, before we get going, there's one more Karak seed up here. And we're just right above where all those trees were. Okay, so now I'm going to head toward the opening there. And sometimes there will be some real good fish spawning in. You might want to take a quick look for that. Good old apple puzzle. Haven't seen this one in a while. I find it's easier to get these in if you do it long ways. It gives the apple a little bit of a runway to kind of slow down instead of just bouncing out. Alright, so I'm calling this video the secrets of whatever tower this is called. Um, there's also a lot of star fragments that tend to fall around here. And I don't see the dragon for whatever the reason. I should be seeing the dragon. Oh, before we get over to the tower, look for this tree right below. Another croc seed. So that was going to be part of the reason I called the, the video the secrets of. Awesome dragon farming right here.
All right, heading right back over toward our tower. There's one more Karak seed I want to scoop up before we actually get over there. So I had a little bit left. And that's what I'm looking for, that little mountain peak right in front of me. Okay, I don't know what the deal is. See, once again, when I do my dry runs, the game is different. Now I'm doing a video, and there's no dragon. And this happened to me the last time, too. I started recording, realized the dragon wasn't coming, and I decided to give it another shot. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to hurry up with this Karak seed now. Actually, yeah, I should have just enough time. No, I will not, because it takes a bit of effort over here to get into our tower. Okay, so that came a lot later than it normally does. Normally it's showing up like right after midnight. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible here. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm making a little bit of a tent so that we can catch these spiky things on fire. Okay, it's going to take a second for those to burn through. And the bad thing is the dragon continues to move while this whole process is going on. So while you're getting shot up into the air like the circus, while map is, you know, while Ink is getting the map, all that doings, the dragon will still be moving. Now you can actually chase it and catch it. If you're diving like I am now, you're going to be more or less pacing his speed. But if you pull the paraglider out, you'll be moving slightly faster than his speed. So if he's getting away from us right now and like going that direction, you can catch him. Just be aware it's going to take a while, A, and B, you're probably going to need to eat some stamina while you're doing it. Alright, so anyway, um, unlike Breath of the Wild, you can actually land on these guys. And now, granted, it's going to be the ice dragon, so we're going to need to dress appropriately for that. Because the temperature will drop as soon as we get within range here. And it'll be hard cold, not just the soft cold, so you're going to need... Now, if you don't have that, go ahead and eat a... Uh, either, you know, ruby shield or ruby weapon, or eat a low-level cold protection meal on top of those pants and you should be good. All right, so now it's still gonna shoot ice balls. The difference is the ice balls are not gonna be coming for us like they're heat seeking missiles. Not to say you can't still get hit by them, I have, but uh, it's not nearly as dangerous as Breath of the Wild. Those things aren't gonna come chasing after you. Okay, so you have a little bit of wiggle room to walk around up here. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is for farming purposes. So you can actually just use a regular weapon. And now if I hit him here, uh-oh. See, I'm not holding the ruby anymore. You know what, I'll just go ahead and eat the meal. I think I got like a gazillion of those things anyway. Okay, so if I hit him here, that's on his body. That's going to give me a scale. So if you want a scale, just go ahead and smack him on his body there. And so anyway, if you want a horn, hit any one of these horns here and that'll give you the dragon horn. Now you can only farm one part at a time. Uh, obviously the claws, it's going to be a little trickier to land on if you can even do that. I've never tried. Uh, it looks like you actually might be able to. No, you will not be able to stand there for long. Okay, so the claws are still old school. You got to do the bow and arrow and, you know, find it. But essentially what's going to happen when you smack them... The thing's going to stay here for a second. You can pick it up. Super cool. So it just makes farming these things so much easier. And unfortunately, you can only get one at a time. I think I already said that. So, um, you know, you'd have to wait for the next night and so on. Now, I think they limit you to two. After you've collected two in a you know relatively short period of time, fun's over. They're going to make you wait a couple of day and night cycles before you can do that again. All right, folks, so just keep this area in mind for future future uh, dragon part needs. 
Okay, so now we got some Karak seeds along the way. I went ahead and diverted because of the dragon, but I actually wanted to go here. There's going to be a Karak seed heading this direction. And then we're going to go over here. There's a Hudson puzzle here. There's another Karak seed up here, and then I want to kill this Stallnox, so I think I'll have to make it nighttime again. Or maybe I'll just go ahead and press, and maybe by the time I'm getting all the other stuff like Karak seeds. It'll be uh, nighttime again. Alright, it's still raining here. Sometimes after you get the tower, the rain will shore up a little bit, but... In my game right now, it is still raining. Okay, so let's once again try this Karak seed. Now it's going to be a short timer. This one's got a real short fuse. So in order to get up there quick enough, you'll have to find a route where you really don't have to do any climbing. Which is good anyway, because it's raining. Whoa! That's the closest I've seen one of those fall to me. I wonder what happens if you're standing right under it. Oh, and check it out. Mighty Thistles. Remember I said we'd need these? Yeah, we got those in the area. Which is awesome. Which means we can finally start upgrading our Barbarian armor. Alright, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and jump across to north. And that'll get us to another Karak Seed. You can already see it coming into view there. A little bit of a climb in the rain, but again, it's manageable. A lot of resting points on the way up. And this puzzle had me all turned around and backwards. And I was having a go with it first time I came here. I don't know why. Now that I, I'm doing it again, it's easy, but this is one I had to just kind of quit doing and then come back to later. I had that thing all upside down and backwards. All right, I'm not paying attention here. Matter of fact, that's probably a softer climb there. Alright, let's see if I can get this in one go. Woohoo, check me out. Practice makes perfect. Alright guys, let's jump down to our Hudson puzzle. Don't forget your fruit. Now this one, there's no building materials readily available for. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just use a weapon to cut down a tree. Actually, you're going to need two trees. I was able to do this once with just one tree, but ever since then, it seems like it wants two trees. Hey, check that out. Death by tree. So just to save time for me going over there and trying it and failing, I'll just go ahead and chop two down. But if you want, you can try the two, the one tree method. Let's see if you have some luck on that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wedge these two trees right into the middle here. Now they can't be leaning one way or the other. They've gotta kinda be upright on their own accord. Cause if it's, you know, leaning on the sign, that's just gonna knock the sign over or he won't like it. So I think I'm good. I think I'm actually freestanding trees right now. Let's give it a shot. Uh, it was wobbling a little, but we're good. 
All right, after Hudson Puzzle, feel free to grab Fleet Lotus Seeds. Now, these are real good cooking ingredients. You can throw out four of those into a cooking pot. They'll give you a high-level meal, or five, but four gets it done. Or you can throw three of those into a cooking pot with a monster part and either the Hightail Lizard or the Hot-Footed Frog, and that'll give you a high-level elixir. So real good, strong cooking ingredient there. All right, so from here, that Stonox isn't going to be ready for us. It is only... It's not even noon yet. So I'm actually going to get some other Korok seeds while we're at it. There's going to be one right here. That's going to be a twofer. I need to find my friend. There's going to be one there. Going to be one up there. Going to be one right there. So yeah, we've got plenty to do in the meantime here. I'll go ahead and head right for that red one. Unfortunately, these are all just kind of spread out a little bit. So I have a feeling this tower video is going to be a little lengthy. But if somebody just wanted help getting into the tower, at least I made that earlier on in the video. So, little victories. Alright, so there's one up here. This is going to be a tough climb in the rain. But I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Uh, remember my formula from the last video? It was four steps, you're going to slide. I'll demonstrate that real fast. One, two, three, four, jump, slide. One, two, three, four, jump, slide. So as you can see, I'm going to need at least need to eat at least one stamina meal before I can get up there. But a way around that is you can actually use a mid-level or high-level, but mid-level gets it done, a speed booster. And what that does is that gives you a little bit more 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 jump slide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 jump slide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, jump, slide. So you can see that actually makes quite a difference there. And silly me, I wasn't paying attention, so now I'm probably going to have to redo some of that all over again. And I didn't get my six steps that time because I'm still not paying attention. But I think I'm good right now. So yeah, that can really help you out on a climb in the rain. Just having that speed meal going for you gives you those two extra steps, and that does make a big difference on a bigger climb. All right, so there's our good friend, the Karak Seed. Now, there's more Fleet Lotus Seeds over here. And a couple of Iron Shrooms, etc. Since I got a Speed Meal, I might as well take full advantage of that bad boy. Those seeds are over that direction somewhere. I'll circle back around to those. I want to see what all I still had to pick up over here. Okay, not a whole lot. Just a couple of loose items laying around. A couple of iron shrooms, yeah. Alright, so again, guys, lots and lots of Fleet Lotus Seeds here. Now, these do respawn in in time. So, you know, circle back around here once in a while and you'll be able to scoop up more of them. Which shouldn't really be a problem, especially if you keep coming back for blue dragon parts. Alright, so from here I'm actually going to go ahead and go... Uh, I'll probably hit the yellow first, just because that blue is a twofer. And man, he is not close. It's going to feel like we're running halfway across Hyrule with that dude. Okay, so this guy's a little swimmer. As soon as we get close enough and right on cue, he'll come into view for you. Okay, I guess now I'll go ahead and circle back to that, that twofer. And that's kind of on the way to another croc seat anyway, so yeah, it's a long walk, but there's stuff to do along the way at least. Not only that, I still got the speed meal going. Go me. That should speed it up just a little bit. Where's this dude at? 
Should be right here. Oh, okay. He was out of my field of view there. Now you can build another, you know, little contraption here. But, yeah. Honestly. Whether you take the time to build something or you just take the time to walk it, you know, one way or another, it's a time consuming peroxide. So, my personal choice is just grab them and go. Okay, and I'm going to head toward my blue pin that's directly in front of me there on my mini map. Lots and lots of honey around here, so if you ever are in the need for honey farming, also keep this area in mind for that purpose. I'll try to avoid them for now just so I don't get stung while I'm trying to carry my friend here. Now I mentioned there was a Karak seed. And that's going to be on one of these little spires, and I think I got the right one marked, so I should be standing right under it, literally right now. And since I'm feeling froggy, I'll go ahead and get some honey. Alright, so to get up there, we're going to take advantage of a send. And simply walk out toward the edge. And you'll see the red signs across the way. There, there's a couple of them. They're both pointing right to this spot here. All right, and I'll show you on the map once again what we're doing. So I need to find my friend is like all the way over here. It's ridiculously far. And it is 4.20 p.m. Hey, it's 4.20 in my game. So that means I don't know if it'll actually be nighttime by the time I get done with this dude. Probably not, but it'll be getting close. Wow, even with the speed meal, this is just painfully slow here. Ah! Suicidal Peter. Oh yeah, you can also throw him and roll him around like a bowling ball. That speeds it up a little. I wonder how much I'll slow down when that meal runs out. None. So I guess the speed meal doesn't help you out when you're using things with Ultra Hand. That's good to know. Alright, there's our painfully, painfully long Karak Seed. Now it's still not nighttime in my game, so that's really pesky. But what I'll probably do is just go ahead and warp back. Once again, take advantage of our campfire. Oh, it's all gone. Guess I need to toss another bundle of wood out. All right, so that effectively makes it nighttime. Okay, so our good friend the Stalnox is right past that spire area down below there, right in front of where I'm flying. Our Croxheed is just past that in that little pond. So I'll scoop that Croxheed up first just because it's kind of high up there and not really climbable, at least not from this spot. I mean, there is a way over there. You can use a send, get up on that island right below me with a tree and then get over that way but there's still some climbing involved there i just find this to be a lot easier okay go ahead and dunk that thing underwater and that'll make it shoot back up out of the water and unpop your cork uncork your cork or is it unpop your cork 
I am not an English professor by any means. Okay, so now I've got a... You know what, I need to make a weapon. This guy's going to be a challenge because he's got a, a fire shield. So what I really need is a two-handed weapon. I don't even know why I tried to do that. Because I am a genius! Alright, this will do a much better job. So basically the first swing will bat the shield out of the way. The second swing does all the damage. So it's just a much easier way to kill that dude considering the weapons he's got. Wow, we're up to Soldier 3. Alright, so we are really here for the Stalnox. Without any further ado... That ought to do the job. It will not take as long as you think. Alright, go ahead and get Ascend ready also. There's a little broken up house right here. That's going to become essential here in a moment. I'll show you why. And if I had just a little bit more stamina, this would go a lot better. Alright, I kind of ran out there. So yeah, this is why I said go ahead and have Ascend ready. We're going to take advantage of this house for an Ascend point so we can get that bow and arrow back out. Oh, and he's already primed to throw something. Look at that. Okay, I shot the eyeball out. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! Okay. <laughs> And I couldn't hit that thing to save my life. Okay, so that's what I came for right there, the Stalnox Horn. That is the prize of the day. And again, that counts with the bone attack up. Uh, set bonus that we're going to be getting real soon here. Yeah, okay. So, let's see if our good friend the dragon is back. That's pretty much it for the area, though. We got the kill in. Got all the Karak seeds. We got some loot. And we got dragon parts. What I'm really looking for right now is to see if I can actually harvest another monster part this quickly. So it's been 30 hours since my last harvest. And since I got a scale last time, I think I'll just go for the horn this time. Haha, <laughs> check that out. Okay, so it's Breath of the Wild style. You can get two back to back. Now I'm pretty sure the game will not allow you to grab another one for some time. Uh, I think it's two day and two night cycles was Breath of the Wild's rule. Uh, again, I'll have to get back to you to see if that's similar here in this game. All right, one last thing here. Don't forget your free dragon parts that are kind of laying all along his back. Uh-oh, I just fell off the dragon. So. You probably saw them lighting up earlier, I just didn't want to grab them because of the length of video, but I had second thoughts, so I kind of just decided to do it at this point. Um, there's quite a lot of these, so again, just take a moment to kind of do that. Um, might be a little challenging, as you can see, to actually stay on his back. Uh, he tends to twist and turn a lot, so that can kind of make Link lose his footing there a little bit. Alright folks, hope that helps. Best of luck and happy hunting.